Hey guys, this is Camfree15 and I am back at it with another video for you guys. And we are back with some more Superman and Lois. Um, which last week predominantly did really well and a lot of people matter of factly enjoyed what they got out of the season premiere of Superman and Lois. And I was actually happy that other people you know, came into this show with an open mind and actually, you know, came back saying that they like it. Um, and I would say this episode, this week's episode, was another good episode. Um, very much had your Superman content along with your Smallville stuff and even, I guess you can say, the drama, what's going on with the kids, even though some people don't care about the drama. Um, you know, I thought it was really good. So um, just like last week, I'm going to split into different you know, story points and stuff like that. I'm going to probably talk about the story point that I didn't really seem to give a crap the most about, but I at least had, like, oh, okay, I guess I see where this is going. I um, mean, that's uh, the Jordan and John storyline. So um, the Jordan and John storyline goes like this. Now, um, because of his awakening of his powers, um, Lois and Clark essentially say, like, yo, Jordan, I, until you can get a control of them and control your powers, um, can't go to school. But in the meantime, Jordan does get to go to the Fortress of Solitude with Clark. Um, so in the meantime, essentially, you have John go to school by himself, which is, like, as he stated in the episode, it was, like, one of the first times he hasn't, you know, gone to school without his brother because they're twins and, you know, these are brothers that have always been together. And stuff like that. Um, so, you know, you see he's having a really rough time. Um, the football team is essentially giving him shit. Um, we later find out um, it's the same guys that, you know, Jordan of the girl he kissed um, from last week. You know, he's essentially taking it to heart and stuff like that. Um, they're essentially like kind of bullying him. We see a scene with him on the practice field him pra of him practicing and stuff like that. And, you know, he wants to get in, and he kind of is a little cocky about it. He's kind of a little like, hey, I want to show what I can do, coach. And the thing is, you know, he's supposed to read the playbook. We find out later that the team didn't give him the playbook, uh, most of the players, because they stole that from him. I'm sure he could not know the playbook. Um, eventually what happens is, you know, he gets in there, he messes up on one play, and the second play, he essentially gets sacked by the dude, by the – by um, old girl's girl um, boyfriend. I forgot her name. I'll remember her name and stuff like that. And essentially, you just have the entire team just surrounded around him, just, I guess, dogging on him, which I'm like, I play football. I'm like, that's kind of fucked up, to be honest. Um, first things first, if I was, if the coach was smart enough, he wouldn't be letting, you know, offensive players, like even a quarterback, get hit and practice. You know, you're not even supposed to be tackling, to be honest. And, two, you're not even supposed to hit the quarterback. Like, I remember when I was in high school, you actually, like, if somebody, you know, hit the quarterback, my coach would go off. Um, obviously because it prevent them from getting hurt and everything. And then, two, it's like, why don't the coach do nothing to fucking, I don't know, tell the players to fucking shut the hell up and surround his teammate? I feel like what's going to happen is the guy who's – the quarterback, the starting quarterback who's going to be a dick on Tim is going to be really – is going to get hurt at one point in the game, and they're going to have to put John in as a storyline, and um, he's going to go out there and he's going to ball out, and then maybe that's when the team will actually respect him and rally around him and start to like him um, with only the quarterback who freaking got, you know, replaced probably hating him. So that's going to be another thing. They also um, go over to um, old girl's house as a barbecue and – you know, John kind of lashes out at her saying, well, you know, why can't you just tell your boyfriend to calm down? And the girl's like, well, he's sweet. You got to know about that. And I'm like, and John makes a good point. He's like, why are you with him? You know, he doesn't seem like your type of person, which, again, makes complete sense. I'm like, yeah, that is true. Um, so, yeah. Um, now, in the Jordan side of the storyline, he goes to the um, Fortress of Solitude. He reads up on the history, which is pretty cool. They also get to see Jor-El, which um, is Jordan's grandfather. And we, when they go back, you know, the second time um, to, to do tests on his powers, we see, you know, that Jordan's powers aren't as strong as Clark's. 
powers and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, eventually that leads him to hearing about this whole situation. He gets pissed off. Um, I will say this. Um, I feel like Jordan gets a little bit too heated at some cases. Like, no lie, like, he gets, like, a little bit too upset at some of the simplest things that, you know, would that there's no need to lash out and be mad at it. Like, I'm like, first things first. I'm like, why are you going to be mad at your own dad if, you know, the tests come back and say, well, your powers are not, you know, strong enough as your dad's? I don't understand. Like, maybe be a little bit disappointed, but okay, fine. Um, yeah, that's, I don't know. I, I think they may need to turn it down. And I saw the ne next episode preview. It seems like he's going to be even on more hiding. So I feel like there's going to be a nitpicky thing going on in this season where this son just is, where Jordan is just a drop. Excuse me, just a drama queen, and he's just like, eh, honestly, it's gonna get to the point where it's gonna get annoying. I'm gonna be like, okay, come on. Even when I was his age, I didn't act like that freaking crazy. Where I'm freaking, you know, getting upset and lashing out at my parents every 24 seconds and stuff like that. Um, but anyways, because of this, it ends up in getting John and Jordan into a fight because John is starting to get a little jealous about what Jordan's doing and stuff like that. He's blaming it. He's like, well, obviously because you, what you did, what you did at the stupid, you know, little thing, little, um, I guess, bonfire thing, kissing the girl, you know, now he's got me having guys come at me and stuff like that when I didn't even do anything, which again is, I guess you can say really understandable. It's like, well, it was kind of your brother's fault for doing something. At the same time, you know, the brother, Jordan didn't know that she was dating. He was just going in like, I guess, well, I, if it was me, I would never kiss a girl like that unless a girl's leading me in to kiss her. But, you know, I guess you can understand where he's coming from. Um, eventually what happens is by the end of the episode, they reconcile and they essentially say, listen, you know, they got each other's back. And also he's able to go to school now because now Clark gave him the little doohickey that alerts him just in case something bad comes up. So that's kind of the brother storyline. I thought it was solid enough, but, um, you know, obviously that's probably going to be most people's weakest point of the um, episode because they really only want to see the Superman stuff. But, yeah. Um, okay, the Lois Lane stuff. Um, yeah, the Lois Lane stuff. We found out with Lois Lane that Morgan Edge, um, he shows up in Smallville at a town hall meeting and stuff like that. And – Lois Lane kind of challenges him, but kind of gets embarrassed at the same time, too, because he kind of owns her and everything. And it kind of, you know, puts her in a spotlight, essentially, and stuff like that. So, yeah, we also do meet – I forgot that we also do meet this other person um, who works for the Smallville Gazette. I forgot her name. I'm going to – I swear I'm going to get her name. Um, but she likes Lois Lane and stuff like that. Um, also, we also do see that um, what's her face is um, Lana Lana Lane's um, husband. After they go to this barbecue, you know, essentially talks to Lois and is like, he's kind of being like, you know, you didn't have to do all that shit. You know, listen, you know, if he's offering jobs where we can make some money, you know. We need the money. This town needs money. So, you know, I'm going to take his chance. I'm going to take his stance, which is rightfully so. But again, like I said, we're all going to know that it's going to come out eventually that Morgan Edge is doing some shady shit. And uh, eventually Lowe's is going to catch him in the act. And then that's when Smallville is going to turn on him more than likely and stuff like that. And then the way how Lois Lane uh, are, you know, the way how Lois Lane's kind of story arc ends in this episode um, or this plot point in this episode essentially ends from the standpoint of we find out or she sees that Morgan Edge changed the paper that she did and the way she wrote it. And she took very much offense to it, which, again, rightfully so. It's like if it's your own hard work, why would she want somebody changing your article? So what I thought was probably a badass scene, you know, that Lois did, especially a great scene by um, – um, I forgot, the actor that plays her. Um, or Bitsy, yeah, Bitsy, Bitsy Tul um, Tulik. I swear, that was, like, one of her, that was, like, one of the best scenes I saw, you know. She literally, like, gives no fucks. She walks into the Daily Planet. So she goes all the way from Smallville to Metropolis. She goes, she walks into Daily Planet. 
And she goes right into like a board meeting where Morgan enters and she's like, and people are like, yo, what are you doing? What are you doing here? He's like, you shouldn't be here. And Lois is like, I don't give a fuck. I'm Lois Lane, bitch. And I'm like, damn, she's not playing. She walked in there. She confronted a mid board <laughs> board meeting with Morgan Edge. She gives him this paper and she's like, you changed my freaking article. Why the hell you do that? And stuff like that. And essentially saying, so I guess there's no freedom of press, huh? I guess I can't freaking print whatever I want to to my own thing. So she's like, all right, fine, here, here's this note. She gives like, I think the, the rewritten statement too. And also no. And Morgan Edge is like, what's this? And she's like, my best written work. And we later find out the end of the episode when he opens up the letter, it says essentially the words, I quit. And I was like, damn, Lois is a badass in this show. She ain't taking shit from nobody. <laughs> I was like, Jesus. I'm like, why did they write Lois so good in this show? And again, like I said, Bitsy Tulak is doing such a phenomenal job. That was probably her best acted scene. I've seen her in the entirety. She's been in the Arrowverse. Like, that was a powerful scene. Like, very powerful, where she's like, I ain't taking shit from nobody. I ain't taking shit from this guy, Morgan Edge, who's a multi-billionaire. I don't care. I get to write what I want to write, and if you don't like it, then you're going to have to deal with it. And I like how she walked in there and gave no fuck. She told people who were like, what are you doing? You know, she's like, I'm Lois Lane, ho. Get the hell out of here. I put the Daily Planet on the map. <laughs> I did like it. Eventually, at the end of the episode, she joins up with the girl who works for the Smallville Gazette, and now she's going to work for the Small, Smallville Gazette, you know, which, again, it's going to put out some more information, some more, you know, papers out there talking about how shady uh, Morgan Edge is and stuff like that. So I'm really liking where this storyline is going with Lois Lane. And again, like I said, I do like Bitsy Tulick as Lois Lane. She's doing a so much better job than she did whenever she showed up in the crossovers, and even Supergirl, um, which, again, I love what I'm getting out of her. Now, the Clark stuff is obviously he's dealing with Captain Luther stuff. Now, Captain Luther, I forgot the city he goes to, but he tries to get more kryptonite because we know he burned out the last reserve of kryptonite, which, again, I thought was stupid. But he's right in his base trying to find the kryptonite, and sadly, he can't find the kryptonite to power up his suit. Eventually, he gets into another fight with um, Superman, which I thought was pretty dope. Again, the simmer, the cinematography looks great, like really good. Um, the fight looks good. He essentially kill, he essentially knocks him down to the ground. We see um, Captain Luther's ship start flying off, and he's like, "Well, it's either me or uh, you go stop the ship that has bombs that could go attack people." Eventually, Superman stops that and blows it up in space and stuff like that. But Captain Luther gets away. Um, and then, you know, General Lane comes, you know, to Smallville and he talks to Clark and essentially General Lane's kind of upset at the fact that why the hell did you move the family out to Smallville and stuff like that. And he's kind of taking some offense to it. He's like, you know, you took everything away from the child, from the children. And also he does find out that the children, the children now know that he's Superman and he's also n mad about that as well. And I'm like, dude. I'm like, that's, this is um, your son-in-law and your daughter's family. You have no say in what they should do. This is what's best for their family. And I'm like, yeah, again, creating some tension between Clark and General Lane, which could also be more tension when we find out later that General or Captain Luther attacks um, the base where General Lane's stationed at, or their main base, and eventually Superman stops him and stuff like that. Also, in the meantime, Captain Luther hands, like, you know, General Lane something. He's like, you can't trust him, essentially. He will turn on you and stuff like that. And when Superman finally stops Captain Luther, we find out that that was only the suit that was sent by Captain Luther. Captain Luther remotely controlled the suit to go up against Superman. But, yeah. And this is when we get a flashback of seeing that the reason why Captain Luther is so anti-Superman and she's trying to get rid of Superman is we see on his earth that we see Kal-El Kal 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 literally attacking humans and he kills some humans um, including General Lane on his earth and it seems like General Lane and Captain Luther um, 
were, I guess you can say, acquaintances, buddies, essentially, and essentially done his arms to, to Cal L's heat, um, heat vision um, on his Earth. And the interesting part is the Superman on his Earth was wearing the black suit Superman, and he was evil. And I was like, yo! And it's funny enough, because we're getting Justice League, and in Justice League, he's wearing, Cal L's wearing freaking the um, black suit Superman, too. And I'm like, Okay, that's cool. Okay, that, 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 that's dope. That's dope. So it makes more sense of why, you know, Captain Luther does not like Superman and why he wants to get rid of him. Because he even makes a mention in the episode. He's like, you know, yeah, he's good and dandy now, but, you know, just wait. He'll go bad eventually. Um, so, again, this could create tension between Superman and General Lane. And, again, will we eventually get a part where General Lane turns on his son-in-law? Again, who knows how Lois will feel about that, too, and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's going to be very interesting. I thought it was another good, solid episode from um, Superman and Lois. Again, I'm loving this show, and I can't wait to see more of this. This is a really good show. Um, and, yeah, so other than that, guys, if you guys like the video, leave a like. Put in the comment section your thoughts on this week's Superman and Lois show, as well as hit that subscribe button to get more Superman and Lois content, as well as more CW show content like Batwoman, The Flash that recently came back. Um, I'm recording this Wednesday, but came out as of yesterday. Um, whenever Supergirl season six, yeah, I think season six, or whatever, the, the final season of Supergirl comes out, and um, the second season of Stargirl when that releases. But other than that, um, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Until then, guys, hopefully you guys have a great rest of your day. Till then, guys, peace.